the California government once believed it could stifle SpaceX by hindering its launch capabilities. But they couldn't have been more wrong. Instead of slowing down, these obstacles have only fueled SpaceX's determination to enhance its operations in another site, Florida. Indeed, Elon Musk's rocket company is now shaking up the entire space industry with its ambitious plans at Cape Canaveral. This demonstrates an unwavering commitment to a future where they can conduct rapid, high-volume launches toward their ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. So, what exactly are their plans? How close are they to realizing this vision? Stay tuned as we uncover everything you need to know about SpaceX's exciting future in Florida. For seven years, SpaceX has left its significant footprint in Kennedy Space Center's historic launch complex, 39A, home of the Apollo and Space Shuttle programs. After NASA opened up the pad for commercial use, Blue Origin and SpaceX both submitted a bid. Blue Origin requested shared non-exclusive use of the complex, while SpaceX wanted to use it exclusively. On December 13, 2013, NASA announced the selection of SpaceX as the new commercial tenant. The agreement was signed on April 14, 2014, giving SpaceX the exclusive use for 20 years. Modifications for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches soon followed. The first launch was on February 19, 2017, for Commercial Resupply Services 10. Since then, this location has witnessed frequent SpaceX launches, up to 93 missions including 81 Falcon 9 and 11 Falcon Heavy in total, as of November 17. Besides KSC, there is another launch facility in Florida, Cape Canaveral Space, Launch Complex 40, SLC 40 which SpaceX leased in 2007-2007 for Falcon 9 rocket launch with the initial launch in 2010. With over 220 Falcon 9 launches as of November 2024, the number of Falcon 9 launches here surpasses that in LC-39A. That's about launch for landing. SpaceX has Landing Zone 1 and Landing Zone 2, also known as LZ-1 and 2LZ-2 respectively are landing facilities at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, used by SpaceX. They allow the company to land the first stage of its Falcon 9 rocket or the two side boosters of its Falcon Heavy rocket. The frequency use of LZ-1 is significantly higher than LZ-2, since Falcon 9 boosters mostly land on the LZ-1 pad and rarely land on LZ-2 except in cases when a Cape Canaveral-launched booster cannot land on LZ-1. Landing Zone 1 is located about 9 miles south of KSC Launch Complex 39A and about 5.6 miles to SLC-40. However, after nearly a decade of use, SpaceX is abandoning the lease of both landing zones to make room for two companies, Phantom and Via Space, as part of the Space Launch Delta 45 allocation strategy. This decision will become effective once the real property agreement is executed. Thus, SpaceX appears to be ending its use of landing zones 1 and 2 in the not-too-distant future. In preparation for this migration, SpaceX has identified Launch Site 39A as an alternative location for landing its Falcon 9 rockets, which is familiar to SpaceX. Currently, SpaceX is in the paperwork phase of this transition working through the necessary legal and operational steps to facilitate the move from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to Launch Site 39A. So, why doesn't SpaceX find another location than LC-39A, for example, SLC-40? Firstly, there's much more space around the Kennedy Space Center pads than there is around the pads down the missile row on Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, CCSFS. Another point is that landing at CCSFS interrupts work on the Space Force Station, but landing up at 39A should allow most of Cape Canaveral to continue work. Frankly, the news of SpaceX's plans to build new landing pads for the Falcon 9 at launch site 39A has taken many by surprise, especially considering the company's assertion that Falcon 9 may be phased out within the next six years. Meanwhile, 
SpaceX operates three drone ships to facilitate landings at sea, but the increasing launch cadence is pushing the limits of these East Coast vessels. Not to mention, using drone ships might slow the launch cadence. This bold move to construct landing zones directly at the launch site reflects SpaceX's readiness to invest heavily in immediate needs, signaling a commitment to enhancing operational efficiency. As demand for launches skyrockets, more returns to launch site landings will be essential. With this strategic development, SpaceX is not just preparing for the future, they are actively reshaping the landscape of aerospace logistics. The construction of new landing pads is just one of many ambitious initiatives SpaceX has planned for the Kennedy Space Center. The billionaire's rocket company is setting its sights high, with plans to launch its colossal Starship rocket, taller than the Statue of Liberty, up to 44 times a year from this iconic location. To make this audacious launch cadence feasible, SpaceX recognizes the necessity of establishing a dedicated Starship production site in Florida. The chosen location is on Roberts Road, where existing facilities primarily support Falcon 9 operations. Recently, work has begun to clear a vast area of land north of the current site footprint for a new production facility, which will be as expansive as the entire Starbase production site. This monumental project, codenamed Hinton, aims to create a high-volume production facility, complete with a high bay and related infrastructure. Construction is slated to commence in January 2025, with an estimated cost of around $1.8 billion in capital improvements, promising to create 600 jobs with an average annual wage of $93,000. As the Roberts Road facility expands, Rebuilding Starship's launch pad at Pad 39A is proceeding. Parts of a new, redesigned OLM have been seen at the Roberts Road facility, and these parts feature many changes from Starbase's first pad, now known as Pad A. They are arranged in a square configuration and incorporate a flame trench, marking a notable shift from the current water-cooled steel plate system which has been used to manage the intense heat and forces generated by the engines, which has faced challenges. Over time, this system has shown signs of degradation, which raises concerns about its long-term effectiveness. Instead, a flame trench system has demonstrated its capabilities in tests with the ship at Massey. Although the flame trench system must be scaled up to handle the super-heavy rocket's thrust, it is likely to offer a more durable solution for managing the extreme conditions of multiple launches. The design of the new OLM, with its square arrangement of parts, suggests that the traditional round ring may be replaced with a square configuration to accommodate the flame trench. This change could address some of the challenges associated with the water-cooled steel plate system and improve the overall performance of the launch mount. SpaceX started preparations for flying Starship from Pad 39A at KSC in late 2021 when Elon Musk wrote on X that construction of Starship orbital launch pad at the Cape has begun. However, no time indication was given. On the question of whether this would still be at LC 39A, Musk answered yes. Furthermore, he added that it will have similar but improved ground systems, and tower to Starbase. To add to the certainty, a statement from NASA spokesperson Laura Aguirre also revealed that SpaceX is allowed to develop the pad in accordance with the leasing agreement from 2014 within the boundaries of the pad. The necessary environmental assessment was conducted in 2019. This, however, includes only the construction. For launch and landing, another approval process would be necessary. Construction began shortly thereafter. Nevertheless, the company's focus then turned to preparing the facilities at Starbase in Texas for initial flights of the full Starship system. In the meantime, the dismantlement of the OLM's legs at LC-39A started on the 12th of March 2024, without a reason. One month later, Elon Musk seems to have rebooted the plan to launch Starship from the Cape with his announcement to have two launch towers at the Cape, with the first launch tower and launch system operational around the middle of 2025. 
the middle of 2025 will also witness the first launch from Florida. Not only launching, SpaceX also landed Starship at this location. This is manifested in the new environmental impact statement that the FAA leaked on June 11, 2024, reflecting changes in the vehicle since a 2019 assessment. A new EIS, the FAA concluded, is needed because of changes in the design of Starship and its operations since the 2019 assessment. SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 EA, the FAA stated, including a catch tower for Super Heavy booster landings. The Starship slash Super Heavy design itself has changed significantly since 2019, and SpaceX has discussed plans to further evolve the design. The 2024 EIS will be the second environmental review involving SpaceX's plans to use LC-39A for Starship launches. NASA completed an environmental assessment in 2019 of the company's plans at the time to build launch infrastructure at LC-39A for Starship, finding it would have no significant impact. At the time, SpaceX was planning up to 24 Starship launches from that pad annually. SpaceX now contemplates a higher launch rate, with up to 44 launches annually from Launch Complex 39A. The Super Heavy booster will also land back at Launch Complex 39A, while in the earlier EA SpaceX proposed landing the booster on a drone ship or at Landing Zone 1, the former Launch Complex 13 at nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy booster landings today. SpaceX has already constructed some infrastructure at LC-39A for Starship missions, including a launch tower far taller than the existing one that is used for Falcon launches. That work, the FAA said, is covered by the scope of the 2019 assessment, but the EIS is needed for additional launch infrastructure to support booster landings and other launch needs, like a deluge system. The new study will run in parallel with an EIS being led by the Department of the Air Force for Starship launches from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That study will examine the potential for using Space Launch Complex 37, which had hosted launches of the now-retired Delta IV, as well as a new site, SLC-50, that would be built between SLC-37 and the next pad to the north, SLC-40, used by SpaceX's Falcon 9. The FAA did not include a timetable for completing the EIS for Starship launches from LC-39A. The Space Force study kicked off with scoping meetings in March and included a schedule that projected publishing a final EIS in September 2025 and a record of decision, selecting which site would be used for Starship launches a month later. All in all, it's exhilarating to witness SpaceX rapidly accelerating toward its ultimate goal colonizing Mars. This ambition is vividly reflected in their recent strategic moves, relocating their headquarters from California to Texas, planning to have a landing pad at LC-39A, and ramping up Starship operational activities in Florida. Elon Musk has made it clear that these efforts are driven by an unwavering commitment to making life multiplanetary. With plans to send uncrewed missions to Mars as early as 2026, and crewed missions potentially following shortly after, SpaceX is not just dreaming, they are laying the groundwork for humanity's next giant leap. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.